we are going to talk today about IP rating. And IP rating means ingress protection. This is a code with two numbers. Originally, it was four different uh, digits, including letters. Uh, but right now, we only use two. That is basically explaining more on how external elements can get into the lighting fixtures. This is an important concept because when you are using the fixtures outside or when you are using them in a very dusty environment, all these external particles or elements can cause damage to your fixture. There is a lot of literature online about IP rating. Some of them might consider this a marketing topic, some of them will consider it a safety topic, and in general, it's a very good reference for anybody in the lighting industry. What we are going to explain today is some of the most relevant IP ratings for lighting. So we are not going to cover one by one all the definitions of IP. We are going to focus on the ones that are more useful for you. When we talk about IP, ingress protection, we are always referring to two digits. The first number is the one that is related to dust particles in the air, in ingress protection of external elements or dust. The second one is referring to humidity or water. So when we talk about the first digit, you can find some fixtures in the market that are using a number two. This is the most common IP rating that you can find for the first digit. And it basically tells you that no objects, external objects with a specific diameter, if I'm not wrong, is around 12 millimeters, 12.5 millimeters, cannot get into the fixture. This equals more or less a finger. So this is a, f a safety um, IP rating, if you want to call it like that. It's just trying to prevent that when you're rigging your fixtures, no fingers get inside of the assembly causing any damage to the people. The next relevant uh, number for the first digit would be probably a five. And it's important to understand that this five number is not a dust tight fixture. If you have a fixture that is IP50 something, it is not dust tight. The dust can still get in, particles of dust can still get in, but these particles of dust will never be enough to damage the performance or the usage of the fixture. This is very relevant because in certain environments it is not about safety and uh, the maintenance of the fixture in the long term in terms of maintaining it working, but also about cleaning. In the old times, it was very, very common, and you can still see it in many theaters, that you periodically open all the fixtures, clean the inside, reflectors, light sources, components, put everything back together, and going back to work. So this is still a routine in many different venues. By having an IP rating of six, this is not a problem anymore. And that is because an IP rating that starts with a six digit means that the fixture is completely dust tight. So no dust will get inside the, of the fixture. And this is a test that is done with a special powder into a chamber, just to ensure that no dust at all can enter the fixture. But there is a second digit, and this second digit it's related to humidity, as we said. The normal, the most normal IP rating that you can find for lighting fixtures is IP20, where, as we said, the first number is just for safety, preventing that a big external element, like a finger or an arm tree or um, any accessory coming, a cable, uh, gets inside the fixture causing any damage either to the fixture or to the technician. The zero basically is telling you that 
there is no protection at all against humidity. This is okay if you are in an indoor environment, having in mind that you will need to open the fixture once in a while and clean it because the dust will get inside. But the fixture is safe, you can use it in an indoor environment without problems. Humidity might affect at some point your fixture if there is a lot of humidity in the air and definitely if you are outside, working outside, or a semi-outside environment, an environment that is covered partially. That's why it makes sense to have another category that is still keeping the two, but adding a second number that is a four. If you have an IP24 um, movie head or lighting fixture, luminaire, wash, whatever. What it will happen is that this fixture will be temporarily, temporarily protected against rain for a small period of time. So if you're using this, for example, in a broadcast environment or a film where you're using the fixtures outside, the small teardrops that will fall into the lenses and into the assembly will not damage the fixture if it's for a small period of time. There is another very, very common rating, which is 54. In this case, you are adding to the almost dust tight rating, because the dust can still get inside, but not enough particles to damage the fixture, the electronics, the drivers, the light source, or even the optics, by adding this temporarily rain protection that is allowing you to use the fixture outside for a certain period of time as long as you take it inside afterwards and make sure that it's in a very good condition. Another typical IP rating might be 55. We are keeping the same dust tight solution, so it's not completely dust tight, the dust can still get in, but by adding the five, we are not only protecting the fixture against rain, but also against some, some pressure uh, in, in the jets of water getting into the fixture. To understand this, just thinking a test where you have water jets coming from different directions, impacting the fixture, but with not a lot of pressure. So it's 12.5 liters, more or less, of pressure. And this is not a very long test. Um, final ground is between one and three meters, three minutes, sorry. Uh, but if this is, if you want a, a fixture that is completely dust tight and you still have this ability of being protected against water jets, then the right solution is having an IP65 fixture. So when you have an IP65 fixture, you know that you don't need to make any kind of cleaning maintenance to the fixture. It's not a perfect machine. It might break somehow. After many, many years using mechanical parts in and out, of course, one, some of those, of those mechanical parts can break and cause a damage to the fixture. Maybe the fixture will stop working. Maybe it will just, the behavior will not, or the performance will not be as good as in the first days. So having an IP65, you can ensure that because of the six number, you don't need to clean it at all. Not only uh, we're talking about dust, but any kind of uh, ingress to get into the fixture, that will be completely protected. But by having the five, means that you can use it also outside, not only indoors. So you can use it in a festival, you can use it in a, in a building uh, for permanent installation. So IP65, we can say that is the only rating here that is for permanent installations. As said before, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that the others cannot uh, be, be installed permanently for a period of time, a small period of time, uh, especially if you're using a 55 or a 54. 
It's just that it, it will not be very safe to leave there a fixture that is not IP65 rated since it's not tested for that. There is another IP rating that is very interesting, which is the 66. The 66 is adding, it's a test where you have even more pressure on your water jets, about 100 liters. And this is relevant if you are mounting your fixtures in an area where um, there is very, very harsh weather environments uh, because you have, the rain is very, very powerful. Sometimes you have it in a resort where uh, the maintenance people is going to clean every day with water jets, uh, with pressure, and is going to apply these water jets to anything, including your fixtures, because sometimes you need fixtures in a pool or, or areas where that they are clean constantly. So the 66 is the perfect solution for that, and also for those places that are close to the water, when the water can even impact the, the fixtures with certain pressure. So we can say that an IP66 rating is definitely always a better choice than an IP65 because it's more protected not only for the ingress of humidity and water, but also for the ingress of, uh, sorry, for the pressure, water jet pressure impacting the fixture. There are another two um, ratings that are very relevant in lighting. Let's put it here in a different area because they are a bit special. One is the IP67, which is basically telling you that apart from all the pressure that you are applying, you can temporarily, temporarily submerge this fixture and it will be no damage to it. You can leave it there for uh, under one meter uh, for a small period of time and then uh, the fixture will not be damaged. The period of time does not depend only on the test. It depends also on how the manufacturer designs the fixture and what the manufacturer expects for the fixture. Some manufacturers, I'm thinking now in HEM, we do temporary immersion for longer period of times, but maybe sometimes less distance. I'm thinking now about the VPL, for example, where we leave it there for long periods of time just to know what happens to the fixture if it's very, uh, submerged but not completely covered, only to the sides. So IP67 is very relevant also for some of your power supplies. A lot of power supplies and a lot of connectors in the lighting industry are rated IP67, which means that they will not have problems for events or shows where the water can temporarily submerge, uh, um, can cover your lighting or submerge uh, your lighting fixture. So it's important, the IP67, but it's not what we normally call IP68, which is a lighting fixture that is prepared to be always submerged for a very long period of time. And this is a very uncertain rating. Why? Because there is no, not a lot of specifics on the standards about what the test should be in order to give an IP rating of 68 to a fixture. Yes, definitely the fixture needs to be able to be submerged to a certain distance in depth. But this distance and more or less all the characteristics are defined by the manufacturer. And they are tested according to the specifications of the manufacturer. So if the manufacturer says that you can use this fixture in a pool and they have the IP68 rating, that means that the manufacturer performed all the tests to achieve that certification. And there are many, many external third party uh, agencies and um, services and companies that can perform all this grading for these manufacturers. And of course, nobody has more interest than a manufacturer to be accurate when they certify their IP ratings because of course, 
uh, the consequences in the long term can be uh, very high, especially when we are talking about water and electronics. Just to finish, it's important to understand that the IP ratings are a code, but are also a standard, and it's coming from a certified um, standardized uh, group or a committee, if you want to call it, which is the IEC. And in Europe, we have a similar standard as well, that is the EN. So both the standards rule over the IP ratings. You can see it in many different industries, but particularly in lighting is very interesting to know the differences between them when selecting your luminaires. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.